Brace yourself for the wildest ride of your life. It's the craziest book Chris Aiken has ever written and other things I should not say. Get ready for over 500 pages of pure, unfiltered debauchery. From his military years, Chris Aiken spills the shocking stories of sex, partying, violence, and the stuff that's so wild it's probably illegal. You've heard the tales on the classic metal show, but never like this. Don't wait. Get your copy now at chrisaiken.net before the censors try to shut it down. Hey guys, this is Wolf Hoffman from Accept, and you're on CMS TV. It's great white right here on your classic metal show doing a Led Zeppelin cover with Babe. I'm going to leave you and uh, our good friend Jack Russell left us this week. And uh, kicking off the show tonight, we heard uh, great white from the Let It Rock release with My World and uh, entering his world of broadcast radio my good friend and partner chris aiken what's going on there chris what is up boss how we doing we're back back again yeah after hopefully on better terms than the last time we convened yeah that's that's (laughs) true that's true but uh thought it was a good way to uh pay a little tribute to our good friend jack russell who unfortunately passed away this week and um you know that uh Led Zeppelin cover uh, kind of says it all. It's, it's calling him back home. So he went home from whence he came. That's right. So, uh, babe, I'm going to leave you. And he did. And he did. And he did. So uh, there you are. But uh, anyway, we're here. Uh, and uh, we're, we're glad to be back. I, at least I am. I can't speak for Chris, but I, I usually think he's in a pretty. Uh, yeah, I'm good. He's ready to rock and roll. Call it I rock good and roll. <laughs> But I like it, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's Perfect. Do some, let's have some fun. Yeah, well, I had some fun uh, last night. Um, I was out and about with uh, some CMSers. Okay. Out, uh, out and about with your uh, co-host on the Chris Aiken Presents, our good friend uh, Eric Farantinos. That's right, yeah. And, uh, of course, uh, our good friend Stephen Piercy. Sure. And Scarfoot, and the lovely Taylor, and Sal, and uh, a few others who were uh, out and about hanging uh, hanging around. Cool. So, so uh, it was a it was a fun evening out of of just some good uh, rat music. Um, Stephen Piercy performed the entire out of the cellar release. Oh, that's uh, cool. It's an in, in its entirety, along with a few extra tunes and um, good show. Um, everybody had a good time, and uh, your uh, friend Eric, uh, always good to see him. Oh yeah, he's always fun. <laughs> so we got to hang out uh, a little bit before the show and a little bit after the show last night, and uh, just kind of you know chatted it up, and uh, you know. Uh, everyone seems to be in good spirits, seems to be doing well. And, um, it's always fun to just catch up with everybody. I don't get to do that maybe once a couple times a year, right? But, uh, when it does happen, it's always a momentous event. And, uh, Hey, I want to tip my hat to our friend, Sal, this guy, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, homebody won't leave the hovel unless it's, uh, he dr- gets dragged out. He literally threw off the, um, the uh, binds of um, self imprisonment and said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm coming to that show. Sounded. And, and at the last minute, grabbed an Uber and Ubered 45 miles out to hang out with us and Ubered home. Jesus Christ. 90 miles of Uber. That must have cost like $3,000. You know, he's like, you know what? Fuck it. I, I'm taking a different attitude. If, if there's something I want to do, I'm going. Oh. <laughs> I said, well. Hey, I don't know what would prevent you from doing that. Before. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so, why was it different before? Well, attitude. Attitude. Well, 
it was different because of attitude and I, it's like an awakening all of a sudden it's like hey i'm a grown man i make a good living i i'm a, i'm a man of means i don't have a wife and kids to be accountable for what am i doing stuck here in my place when there's a show going on and there's cms people hanging out and having fun why so can't i be a part of that so really what it means is he likes his um he likes his um, new job better than the old job, <laughs> perhaps. And he's and he's much happier, so he's willing to go out. <laughs> so he did. All right. How long have we been on now? Uh, five minutes. Five minutes. Chris seems sad tonight. You seem sad. You don't appear to be <laughs> sad. <to laughs> we me. haven't even gotten started. <laughs> you don't appear to be sad to me. I've had like two seconds to say anything. You're recapping what you did last night, and I'm sitting here listening. Maybe he's watching an old show. I don't know what he's watching, but well, he's commenting on this show, on this Rumble, no, this Rumble chat. So I don't, I don't see any sadness in your <laughs> in your uh, demeanor at all. Yeah, I'm not sure where that's coming from, but okay. <laughs> okay. I'm happy, Barden. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> See how happy I am! Woohoo! <laughs> Jesus, that's hysterical. <laughs> We've been in the show four fucking minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I haven't had time to get going yet. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so so uh, you know, uh, thanks thanks for everybody who came out last night and hung out and chit chatted and enjoyed the Stephen Piercy show and. You know, um, we all were able to gather before the show and, and have a couple of cocktails together and, uh, Scarfoot, uh, joined Taylor and I and enjoyed some tacos together and some margaritas. And, um, you know, we, we, me and, uh, Eric, we, we shared some pizza together after the show. Nice. <laughs> So I'm feeling a little bloated. I took a big old dose of perfect seven before the show. Oh boy. <laughs> just to, just to so clean. there might be some short segments tonight no, while you go no. shit it out. No, it ain't going to be that quick, but, uh, I just, just get the pipes clean back out. I don't, <laughs> I don't normally eat like that. So it was just like, holy shit. I, I, I drank a little bit too much, but I wasn't driving. So that wasn't a problem. And I, uh, had a few, a little too much to eat. Right. And then uh, this afternoon on our on uh, our way back into the city to drop Taylor off, uh, we reconnected with Sal and went to one of his uh, favorite places down the street from his place, the Benchmark. Okay. And we enjoyed some cocktails and some food this afternoon. Look at you. <laughs> Jesus. So, so I'm feeling a little little uh, bloaty. I'm feeling bloated from I guess so. too much indulgence. That's, yeah, well, uh, you'll work it off. I know oh, you. You'll you'll go walk thirty miles tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I by the time I got home, I got home at like um, just at five o'clock, and and I said, oh man, I got about I could catch about a ninety minute nap. Right. So I took a ninety minute nap, got up, jumped in the shower, got got all fresh and clean, wake wake my ass up, and here I am. Here you are, ready to rock. Yep. But I am telling you, dude, and I know you know this from experience from your Van Halen trip uh, uh, almost 10 years ago, or actually 10 years ago. Yeah, it was yeah, 2014, well, right? 2013, yeah, 2013, I think, yeah. Yeah, so it's been, <clears throat> excuse me, it's been 11 years. But, yeah. dude, the traffic was absolutely just horrendous. I cannot tell you. I mean, obviously, I live in the general vicinity, and, and I do experience some traffic. I sure. cannot tell you the how bad the traffic was yesterday. Uh, I left uh, the city after picking Taylor up. We we left at ten minutes of three. Okay. On a Friday, which is just horrific. Sure. And sure. and to drive forty five miles, two hours and ten minutes. Jesus Christ! And now, it was that because of the DNC getting ready to be there? No, or it's just. Nothing? I think it's just. So end of summer traveling people blowing out of town people getting the hell out of dodge you know okay. but it wasn't because of construction it wasn't because of accidents it wasn't because of any any obstructions it was just bumper to bumper traffic for miles and <laughs> miles and miles three three and four lanes wide you know Fuck that and then coming back this morning we we left the hotel at like 11 o'clock this morning on a saturday Right. Getting back to the city took us two hours. 
Fuck we left that. at eleven. We left at a. We left right at eleven. We made a little pit stop. We didn't get get back to the city until after twelve. Or I mean, it was. Yeah, we left. It was like an hour and yeah, just close to two hours. So it was almost <laughs> one o'clock. No thanks. Yeah. To go forty five miles. Yeah, this is why I'm a homebody. <laughs> no shit, dude. I was. I was just like, holy fuck. You know, so it was just like, wow, look at this. So it was ridiculous traffic, but, uh, anyway, it, it, it paid its dividends and, uh, we had a great time. So, uh, everybody who came out last night, uh, thanks. We had a great time. Good, good. Good to hear. Did you hear from your friend, Eric at all? I know he had, I to have fly not. Out. I know he had to fly out real early this morning. They had to bug out of the hotel at five 30. Yeah, so, he, he te- what did he text me about? Something like 8 o'clock in the morning, and I was surprised he was even uh, alive. Oh, they, they left the hotel at 5.30, and they had to catch their uh, plane at O'Hare at like 8. And, oh. so, and so then they had to fly to like like uh, Nashville or something, you know, some ridiculous, and then drive to like Johnson City, Tennessee or something. Yeah. Like that. So it was They're just. in Kentucky a, today. In Kentucky, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, he texted me something from that show last night, which we will get into in the second segment of this show tonight. (laughs) All right. Didn't have to do with me, did it? No, 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 no. It has to do with Jack Russell. Oh, okay. There is a glut of weird Jack Russell stuff going around right now. All right. Well, I I did speak to, uh, I did speak to Steven about it. Okay. And, uh, when I, when I, saw steven you know i walked into the dressing room and he goes hey bud <laughs> just like real <laughs> real steven ask you know right i walked in and you know we exchanged pleasantries and stuff and i said steven i gotta ask you i said you know you're you know as of late you've been talking about putting your career to bed that you're you're winding your career down you know you've kind of indicated that that's what you're doing yeah and i said uh Give me your honest opinion. What's your thoughts? Rolling Stones, 80 years old, still strutting the stage in front of stadiums. He's a dude. I'm telling you, those guys made a deal with the devil. <laughs> <laughs> I, said that, I said, that's exactly what Chris and I say on the show, that they made a deal with the yeah. devil. He said, there is no fucking way at 80 years old, these guys are strutting around like they are if they haven't made a deal with the devil. Yeah, no, it, it's crazy what they're what they're able to do you know and because, as we talk to guys that are younger than them but old yeah they're all feeling it they're mm-hmm. all feeling it now and they're like jesus 15 more years of this no fucking way <laughs> <laughs> well i walked into the dressing room and he was sitting in one of those big chairs and he he's literally sitting like this yeah like he's dead <laughs> just, just trying to recover you know, right. but, uh, you know, he, he did the, like a 90 minute show, no breaks, you know, and they just did back to back songs from out of the cellar and, cool. uh, you know, energetic as always. And sure. Just, just out there pumping it up, you know, being, being Steven Piercy yeah. doing his rat and roll. Yeah. You get a night of rat when you see that show. That's for sure. Sure. Sure thing. And so, yeah, I chit chatted with him and then I asked him, I said, any thoughts on Jack Russell? He says, Rest in peace, my brother. He says, he goes, it's always sad when I, when one of ours is gone like that. And I said, mm-hmm. well, were you guys friends? I said, were you guys like close friends or he goes, yeah, of course we played the strip way back in the day when they were still Dante Fox and yeah, we were still, Mickey Mickey Rat, Rat, yeah. you know, and he, he was telling me a couple of little snippets there. You know, he says, he said, Jack partied hard, man. That's all I got to tell you. He was <laughs> self-inflicted. You know, he says, I, I'm sad to see him go, but man, he said that that's a, that's a tough life. That guy lived. And if Steven Piercy is saying somebody else partied hard, <laughs> that's partying hard. Exactly. Cause Steven Piercy in the day, even, even past the day partied really hard. Yeah. He, he was a party guy. Steven only in only recently last 10 years or so stopped partying like from like slowed down from legendary status. But he was legendary status partier forever. And if yeah. he's saying Jack partied harder than him. Yeah. Woof. Yeah. You know, Steven, obviously he's got, you know, he's got uh, like eight or 10 years on, on Jack, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, Jack was uh, 63 and Steven is what? 70, 71, yeah. something like that. 
72. Yeah. Something like it. You know what, Barden? Worry about managing you. Don't worry about fucking producing the show. Shut up. It's not the background. It says Chris Aiken presents. It says Seth Williams. Yeah. It has. If I go to this one. You can see the there. CMS and all that other shit too. I just yeah, have it, it shrunk down. So shut the fuck up. There. It's all back there. It, it's yeah. funny how people want to produce the show. Yeah. Well, you know what? Fuck off. How do you like that producer? <laughs> yeah, you need a better backdrop. You yeah. need, you need to uh, brighten your attitude a little bit more. Yeah. You, need to, you need to step up to the mic a little more. Yeah. I'm doing everything wrong tonight. Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> Holy mother of fuck. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So anyway, I just had an opportunity to, to speak uh, to the legendary there. Stephen Piercy. And there you go. Happy naked, <coughs> naked chicks. Happy <laughs> naked chicks. Yes. That should be you better. Ne- you can never go wrong with naked chicks. No, that's better. Um, but yeah. So, so uh, I, I brought that up and, and. I got now what? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking A. <laughs> this 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 is doesn't warrant a segment in itself. This is okay. just this is just a a confirmation yeah. <clears throat> of something that it, it was just the uh the culminate <laughs> go ahead i'm sorry <laughs> so it was a culmination of the parties involved in the story being in the same place at the same time that it yes. hit me like a bolt of lightning yes as you're well aware former slaughter drummer Bloss elias is drumming with stephen piercy mm-hmm. yeah Stephen Piercy, of course, is the one who broke the news to us that during the Voices of Metal tour, he witnessed Janet Gardner getting punched out by her husband. Yes. That made ripples all over the place. Sure did. <laughs> I have not seen Boss Elias in person since like 1998 or 2000. Okay. Okay. So I have not had the opportunity to speak to him personally. And sure. I said, oh, boss, while you're here, right? I have to know. And I told him the whole story. I said, we, had, we were told <clears throat> that during the Voices of Metal tour that um, we're kind of flirt- being a little bit flirtatious with you during the voices of metal tour and and janet garner's then husband tour manager behind the scenes keyboard player was getting a little bit fed up a little bit jealous of the interaction right and he punched janet gardner out he said 100 percent true <laughs> nice he said he said and and it wasn't because we were flirting or anything he said the girls were on the side of the stage watching our set okay and he said he came up, he came up and got, he said they got into some kind of verbal argument. And he said, next thing he knew, he just clocked her. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> he wow. goes, he, he was just a bad dude. That's yeah. what, that's what uh, he said. So all these years later, the CMS uh, legacy lives with right. the, the the infamous Jan Keeneman interview and one of the parties who was a witness to it and one of the parties who apparently was part of it <laughs> the impetus the impetus yeah. behind it told me 100% true wow well there you go so i guess it's not a rumor anymore it's not a rumor it's not a rumor <laughs> so i thought you would find that interesting oh yeah it just hit me like a ton of bricks that wait a minute steven's here bloss is here yeah people who have firsthand knowledge of this right i have to ask <laughs> that's funny and he didn't bat an eye he didn't bat an eye you know and and uh strangely enough after all these years uh, like I said, I think the last time I saw Bloss was maybe 2000. So we're talking 24 years ago. Sure. He remembered me. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that was cool. You haven't, you haven't run into slaughter at any of the shit that you do. Mm, no, 
not Bloss because Bloss left the band not yeah, long. Yeah, that's after true. That. He was in the Blue Man group for and yep. they had that other guy. After they did that Back to Reality release, I think. That's right. Yeah. He left the band. You know, yeah. and I hadn't hadn't seen Bloss since. Right. But that guy, he hasn't aged a day. I know it's 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 infuriating. When you see that guy, he probably he probably weighs exactly the same, looks exactly the same. Hair is exactly the same. Seems like he has the same energy. He does. You know, it's I'm, like, I'm just telling you, watching him play was was a pleasure. He'll probably because, be the Rolling Stones drummer in 25 years. Yeah, something like that. But watching him play last night was a pleasure because sure. he was he was doing the whole twirling the sticks between every beat. You know, right? Twirl beat, twirl beat. I mean, he was just doing the whole thing all, the whole night. And it, just, just watching his antics, I'm on stage or his, his, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? His, uh, his, his energy or whatever, yeah, his physical ability up sure. there on stage to play. He, he just was, he was spot on. I was like, holy shit, that guy has not missed a beat. Sure. Uh, no pun intended. Yeah. I know Eric has said a couple of times that, that Bloss brought a new energy. That's really made the band better. He, uh, he definitely was. You know, that band was very cohesive last night. So, you know, of course, you know, most of them, Matt Thorne was with them this time around. Right. And, uh, you know, because they frequently switch out the bassists, you know, and sometimes the drummer, you know, those two, the, the mm -hmm. rhythm section has been the least consistent of band members right. with Steven's band. But last night it was, it was right in the pocket. So oh, that's real awesome. good, real good. Yeah. But it was, it was uh, fun catching up with Bloss. I mean, just real friendly guy, really down to earth, just laid sure. back, easy going. You know, just, we were just chit chatting about old times and things, and it's right. like wow, <laughs> it's like this. It's like no time has passed. I know it's crazy. I wonder why he's not in Slaughter. He told me why. He we were actually that's interesting. You would ask me that because of that. He said that uh, we were talking. I said. I had the opportunity. I said, do you remember the small club in Akron, Ohio, Ron's Crossroads? And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That little place on the corner. And I said, yeah, that, exactly. I said, uh, when I got into radio, that was really my first real promotion per se, you know, right. live radio promotion. I actually picked Mark Slaughter up at the hotel mm -hmm. took him to the radio station and did like an hour of slaughter and talking about the show and pumping up sure. the show and, you know, went out there and, um, you know, promoted the thing. I said it was for revolution and we were talking about that. He goes, that was just before Tim died. And I right. said, yeah, absolutely. And he goes, you know, after he passed away, he said, our band was never the same. He said, uh, when Blando came into the band, he said, we did that one album together. And he said, it just, it just lost its, lost its energy it just lost its uh chemistry and he said it just wasn't the same for me anymore i i just lost my interest in slaughter at that point hmm. okay so that's kind of the answer right there he didn't say i left slaughter because of this it's just that he just his interest in slaughter just kind of waned after that right wow well that's <clears throat> and barden we're not talking about blots we're talking about Bloss, B L A S Elias. Bloss Elias. Bloss Elias, not not Bobby Blotzer. Although I did talk to Jason Green and and uh we did discuss his uh his uh um appearance here on the show when he talked for an hour and we asked yeah. two questions. Right. And uh we chit chatted about that a little bit and how, how nutty uh Blotzer, not Bloss, but Blotzer is. Sir and Robert, remember he doesn't like he doesn't like what I call him when I call yeah. him fucking blots. And he said that uh, you know that appearance that he made here on the show, the appearance that Jason Green made here on the show, uh, even to this day, he said people are still commenting on that. Huh. Well, that's funny. That's cool. Yeah. Are you were at the show? Does Johnny fit or no? Yeah, he fits fine. You know, he, he's a little more showy than Eric. Eric's a little more laid back, a little more prowess. Johnny likes to get up there and, and use all the facial expressions and act right. like really just grinding it out, grinding it out, you know, right. as to where Eric is just more laid back and just 
doing his thing. You know, Eric's just right. an old dude. You know, Johnny, he likes to he likes to show off, which is interesting because right in front of us where uh, they comped us the seats, uh, Johnny Monaco's mother was there to see him. Oh, nice. And she was right in front of us, and she's this little old lady, just a little lady. Right. And uh, Taylor got the biggest kick out of her because she just was, I'm here to see my son tonight. You know, he's been doing this a long time and I'm just really excited to see him, you know, and, and, uh, she, she was just commenting through the whole show and stuff. So, you know, she might've been, I don't know how old she is, but she probably in, in her late seventies, early eighties, okay. maybe, you know, and she just, she seemed to be enjoying herself, you know, well, that's cool. <laughs> And so we got backstage there and, and, uh, Johnny came in, uh, and, uh, Taylor said, Hey, we met your mom. And he says, you saw her. And I, she goes, yeah, she was the cutest little old lady. He goes, man, I can't find her anywhere. <laughs> he says, I've been out there looking all over the place for her. She probably went home. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Who, knows? Who knows? But, um, yeah, just a fun filled evening, man. Enjoyed it. So. Thank you, Onesti Entertainment as well. That that Ron Onesti, I'll tell you, he he does everything right with his his performances, or the acts that he brings in, and you know the way he treats everybody, and right. you know, he treats he treats these guys really well. You know, nice accommodations and everything. He just does a real nice job. Oh, well, that's cool. That and sounds he like is, he had a fun time overall. Yeah, he's just a rah rah American guy, man. He sure. just loves America. He loves rock and roll. He just he, everything is God bless America. God bless rock and roll. God bless you, you fans. You know, he, <laughs> he's, just, he's just so so animated about it. Right now, stand up for the playing of the national anthem before well, we get does. started. He comes out with a flag and starts waving it around. Oh, us. nice! <laughs> yeah, he, he walks out there with the American flag and he's out there waving it around and you know singing the national anthem right. before the show. And you know, you think he's a Trump guy? Oh, I'd imagine. Mm -hmm. Will he wave the sickle flag once um <laughs> once fucking camel toe wins? <laughs> So anyway, enough about my evening out and about, but uh good time had by all. So um it's one of those opportunities I look forward to getting out of the house and sure. actually meeting up with some fun people and just you know, just having some good food, having some cocktails, some good conversation, some laughs. Right. You know, and just uh enjoying uh enjoying life. So uh It's the album that changed everything, Metallica's Black Album. In cause and effect, Metallica, author Chris Aiken takes you back to the lead up, the release, and the shockwaves that followed. Relive the moment that divided fans, reshaped heavy metal, and turned commercial radio on its ear. With insider stories and personal memories from rock critic and radio personality Chris Aiken, this book is a backstage pass to one of rock's most iconic moments. Get your copy now at chrisaiken.net or on Amazon. Don't miss out on this epic journey through heavy metal history.